I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonny. And before we get started with the No Half Step in Hockey coverage, first, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you learn everything you need to know about the show and what you're getting educated about. So you can click on that merchandise tab. Take straight to our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special event t-shirts, and so much more. All the gimmicks you come to know and love and expect from Renegades of Puck are all still available in our online store, whether that is socks, throw pillows, wall art, bed sets, makes no difference to the Renegades of Puck. Something like 88 different items in our online store best said that we've sold out so that you can buy in social media is of critical importance to this independent operation so here's how you can jump in the trenches with the renegades of puck you can find us on x and threads you can also find us on facebook and instagram and even on tiktok so please whatever social media platform you prefer help us out jump in the trenches right there youtube is what we are pushing the hardest right now and what we need the most help with please subscribe to our youtube channel today to get the latest episodes of the podcast also all of our different episode breakdowns our recaps our previews, our interviews, all of that on separate playlists right there, easy to utilize on our YouTube channel. The future of all podcasting has a video component to it, and YouTube is the best way to do that. So please support the YouTube channel, help us build that up, and we can go back to expanding our platforms once we get that established to the place that we need it to be. So again, that's our YouTube channel. Subscribe today, and also turn on those notification buttons if you don't mind. Venmo, that's how you can support the show financially you can make a donation by just going to venmo and searching renegades puck or you can scan the qr code that is currently on your screen every single dollar goes a long way to helping the renegades of puck as a matter of fact i could use some support right now in raising some revenue to get some t-shirts for the renegades of puck hockey club also a couple of other projects that are ongoing right now here at the bunker so if you can spare a dollar we could use it and every single penny of that dollar will go to helping the renegades of puck support your your local renegades today by scanning the QR code that is currently on your screen. Now, listen, I know it is time for the no half step in hockey coverage, so let me deliver the goods. It is time for operation number 903. That is right, it is time for show number 903. And at this moment in hockey history, the National Purrs currently find themselves where they will finish for the season in fourth place in the Central Division. The Preds have skated in 81 games this season, which means the preview coming up is the final preview the regular season. The Preds have a record of 47, 29, and 5, 99 points on the season. Just to show you where they are in a bubble all alone, they're five points behind the Colorado Avalanche, and they are 10 points ahead of the St. Louis Blues. So the Nashville Predators will finish in fourth place in the Central Division. Just recently wrapping up the home portion of the schedule with a record of 23, 16, and 2 on the road, which is where the last game of the regular season will take place. They have a record of 24, 13, and 3. The Preds have scored 267. Seven goals this season. They've given up 244 against. That's a goal differential of plus 23. The most recent updated standings on the Central Division have seen the Dallas Stars clinch the Central Division title. They have the little Y next to their name now. They have one game remaining in the regular season, a record of 51, 21, and 9. 111 points has them five points clear of the second place Winnipeg Jets. And then the Colorado Avalanche are in third place with 104 points. So the Dallas Stars will await the second wild card winner while the Nashville Predators will await one of the other division winners the Pacific division winner so the Nashville Predators find themselves in fourth place in the division at 99 points the St. Louis Blues are at 89 points the Minnesota Wild finished uh, or will finish the season in sixth place they currently have 83 points the Arizona Coyotes will finish in seventh they have 75 points right now with two games to go in the year and the Blackhawks still have three games remaining but they will finish in last place and currently they have 51 points now the wild card race which still has some minimum intrigue, some minimal, minimal drama to it. The Nashville Predators are the number one wild card team with 99 points, one game remaining, which means they could top out at 101 points this season. The Vegas Golden Knights are in the second wild card spot with 94 points, five points behind the Nashville Predators, three games remaining, which means if the Nashville Predators do not gain another point and the Vegas Golden Knights win all three of their remaining games, they would surpass the Predators for the number one wild card spot. That is 
unlikely, but it is a possibility for the Preds. What's up in the week ahead? We'll get the schedule coming up here as soon as the regular season wraps up. But the Predators will face the Pacific Division winner, and that is seemingly going to be the Vancouver Canucks, who are currently five points ahead of the Edmonton Oilers. The Vancouver Canucks defeating the Edmonton Oilers head-to-head on Saturday night took much of the intrigue out of that. I believe it's 85% certainty that the Predators will face the Vancouver Canucks in the first round. So we will start talking about that, and we'll bring those particular episodes from earlier in the season back and definitely talk about So that's what's the week ahead for the Nashville Predators after this game in Pittsburgh against the Penguins. Now the Nashville Predators regular season series against the Pittsburgh Penguins. This is the second of two regular season meetings. They met the first time back on November the 28th at Bridgestone Arena. Preds scored the 3-2 victory in overtime. Soros got the win, 29-31. McCarron got two goals. Forsberg got the goal and an assist for two points, and that goal was the game-winning goal in the game. Tristan Jari, 22-25, took the loss. Malkin and Rust scored the goals for Pittsburgh. Now, when it comes to that Penguins team, Penguins have a lot on the line, a lot still to fight for. Overall, the record, 37-31-12. and 12. They have 86 points. They are sixth in the Metropolitan Division, 22-14-4 and four on home ice, 247 goals for, 244 goals against. The goal differential of plus three. What's the most intriguing part of the Pittsburgh Penguins season remaining is that they're in sixth place, but they are still alive for a wild cup card spot in the Eastern Conference. Wild card in the East goes as follows. Tampa Bay is in the number one slot with 96 points. They are clear and they have that spot solidified. The Washington Capitals currently hold the number two wild card spot with 87 points, but Detroit also has 87 points. Philadelphia also has 87 points and Pittsburgh has 86 points. Two games remain for the Capitals. Two games remain for Washington. One for Philly and two for Pittsburgh. So the Predators will be the next to last game of the season for the Pittsburgh Penguins. So the Penguins, again, still have a lot to play for going into this game on Monday night. Their most recent stretch of action, let's talk about their last five games on the 4th of April, a 4-1 to win at the Washington Capitals on the 6th of April, a 5-4 to win versus Tampa Bay on the 8th of April, a 3-2 to overtime loss at the Toronto Maple Leafs on the 11th of April, a 6-5 to overtime win versus Detroit, and most recently on the 13th, a 6-4 to loss versus the Boston Bruins. When it comes to the rankings between these two teams, when it comes to the goals for category. The Nashville Purse sit at 3.26 on the season. That's 11th best overall in the NHL. And the Pittsburgh Penguins sit at 3.06. That's 18th best in the NHL. In the goals against category, 3.01 per game for Nashville is 13th overall in the NHL. And the goals against category for the Pittsburgh Penguins, 3.01 is 14th best in the NHL. Shots on goal. The Predators have just blown up in this category in the last two weeks. Up to 32.2 shots on goal per game. That is 8th best overall in the NHL. And the National Predators only top 10 statistical metric. 32.5 shots on on goal for the Pittsburgh Penguins is actually one spot better than the Predators at seventh overall. So we should expect some incredibly high shot volume. And then the game will end up being 20 to 18 in shots on goal. Please don't let it be 20 to 18 shots on goal. That would not be a high event hockey or entertaining type of event game in the shots against category. These two teams are again are very similar at 19th and 20th, 30.5 shots against per game is 20th in the NHL for the national Predators, And the Pittsburgh Penguins 30.2 is 19th on the special teams unit quite surprised to see that the Pittsburgh Penguins have struggled this mightily on the power play, only converting 14.5% of the season to 31st overall in the NHL. 27 conversions out of 256 opportunities. The Preds converting at 21.6%. That's 15th best in the league. 58 conversions on 268 opportunities. On the penalty kill, the Pittsburgh Penguins, though, are quite far ahead of the Nashville Purs in this particular metric. Ninth best kill rate in the league at 81.2%. They've given up just 45 power play goals against on the entire season. The Preds' PK rate is 77%. They're ranked 22nd in the league. They have given up 56 power play goals against on the season. Now listen, the names that you're about to hear for the Pittsburgh Penguins are not surprising whatsoever. They have been the names that have been near the top of the list over there on this team for quite some time. So let's run down the top five scores for each of these teams. Let's talk about Sidney Crosby leading the Pittsburgh Penguins. 41 goals, 49 assists, 90 total points. Another big season for Sidney Crosby. Malkin, 25 goals. 
goals and 39 assists for 64 points. Typically plays quite well uh, against national partners, except for against Luke Evangelista, maybe uh, d- directly. Uh, Rust, 28 goals, 27 assists, 55 points. Carlson's at 10 and 43 for 53. And Gensel's at 22 goals and 30 assists for 52 points. Over on the other side of the ledger, the visiting team, the national partners coming into their final game of the regular season. Philip Forsberg is actually ahead of Sidney Crosby in total points. Sidney Crosby at 90 points on the season. Philip Forsberg at 93 on the season. 47 of those are goals. 46 of those are assists. So Philip Forsberg has also had a remarkably balanced season. And to think it wasn't that long ago that he had dipped below a point per game on the season and then just took off after that, seizing the all-time franchise goals record now up to 47. And while 50 seems unlikely, having just had a hat trick the other night, nothing's impossible when it comes to Philip Forsberg. Roman Yossi second on the team in scoring 23 goals, 62 assists, 85 total points. An incredible season for the captain of the Nashville Predators. Nyquist is at 22 goals, 52 assists, 74 points, and was one of the best free agent signings of this entire season. Across the league, there's no doubt about it. The stats prove that out at 74 points. O'Reilly is also in that listing at 26 goals, 42 assists for 68 points. Tommy Novak, fifth on the team in scoring 18 goals with 27 assists to add to that for 45 total points in net Tristan Jari who took the loss to the Nashville Predators the previous time 1925 and 5 a 903 save percentage of 2.91 goals against average six shutouts on the season that is a very very high number so watch out for that UC Saros 35 23 and 5 on the season a 906 save percentage 842.84 goals against average with three shutouts on the season so very comparable numbers when it comes to save percentage and goals against on those two net minders And it would be a rematch of the game that took place on November the 28th at Bridgestone Arena where UC Saros got the victory, but not until the overtime session. Philip Forsberg did score against this Pittsburgh Penguins team, so it's not unlikely that he'll find a way to get on the score sheet in this one. Remember, with 93 points, he is not only three goals from 50, but three points from tying the franchise record. That is also something that Philip Forsberg seems to be chasing and cognizant of. So we will talk more about that. All right, that's got you all set up for the National Predators final regular season game in the the Pittsburgh Penguins have a whole lot more to play for in this game than the Nashville Predators do. So the Preds just need to be cautious and make sure everybody comes out of this game good and healthy because they're heading on over to Pittsburgh. Luzon's going to go for the hits record. And I expect the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to be highly competitive and ready to go and very aggressive. They got to have those two points leading into their final game of the regular season if they want any hope of displacing the teams ahead of them. And there are a couple in the wild card race. That's going to do it for the preview session. Let's go back and talk about the Rebirth Sports full game recap. Let's talk about the Preds' most recent game. It's against Columbus Blue Jacks closed out the regular season home schedule. Let's go back and hear from it now after this break right here on the Renegades and Puck Podcast. Hockey players are as unique as the game itself and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We go all the way back to April 13th, the year 2024, when the Nashville Predators were closing out the regular season series against the Columbus Blue Jackets at Bridgestone Arena. Also happens to be closing out the regular season portion of the schedule. Head coach Andrew Brunette deploys his lines and defensive combinations in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist, Zucker, Jankowski, and Glass, Beauvillier, Novak, Evangelista, Anderson, Dolan, McCarron, and Sherwood. So Anderson Dolan makes his first ever appearance for the Nashville. Nashville Predators, McDonough and Yossi, Luzon and Carrier, Stastny and Shen are your defensive pairings. You see Soros gets the start in net. We are just 19 seconds in the first period where we find Greaves coming up with a save on Anderson Dolan. His first game, his first shift, and his first shot on goal of the game. That would have been sweet if that one would have found its way to the back of the net. Welcome to the Nashville Predators. 52 seconds into the first period, it is Soros coming up with a save on Olivier, former Nashville Predators. The first save for UC Soros in this game. At the 204 mark, though, we find Mal. Testa coming in with his first goal of the season, a wrist shot from the slot after a clean face-off win by the Columbus Blue Jackets. That first goal of the season at 204 gives Columbus a 1-0 lead here in the first period, but it would only be 45 seconds later before the Predators would respond. At 249, Tommy Novak would pick up his 17th goal of the season, tying the game up at one apiece. Luke Evangelista did the work, the big-time setup, the diagonal 
touchdown pass for Novak's redirect right there at the back post. Easy hookup for Novak on this one. His 17th of the season ties the game at one apiece. 3.55 in the first period. Now Saros comes with the save on Texier. 4.12. Marchenko goes off the box. Two minutes for tripping. And the captain, Roman Yossi, is going to convert on the power play almost immediately with his 22nd goal of the season. A heavy shot from straight away. You know the one. You've seen it plenty of times. 22nd goal of the season for Yossi gives the Preds a 2-1 to one lead now early in the first period. Highly active first period. 4.37 in the first. Saros comes with a save on Gaudreau. 5.37. Saros a save on Blankenberg. 7.42. Saros comes with a save on Cylinder. And 8.46. Yossi Saros a save on Nylander. So the Columbus Blue Jackets clearly responding after the Predators pick up two quick goals. But at 13.25, it's going to be Tommy Novak coming with his 18th goal of the season. It's also his second goal of the period. Bovillier makes the pass from behind the net to the faceoff dot and Novak finishes off this one with ease. Novak's 18th gives the Predators a 3-1 to one lead here in the first period. 14-28 mark of the first period. It's Greaves coming up with a save on Philip Forsberg at 17-03 of the first. Olivier and Shen square off and have about five minutes each is the result. But I got to tell you, for as tough as we all know Olivier is, Shen handled himself like a real pro in this particular fight scenario. At 19-57 of the first period, it's Saros coming up with a save on Nylander. Goudreau's follow-up from a sharp angle, hits the post and bounces out as the buzzer goes off. Believe if it was inside the post, this one would have counted. It was just that close, but it was off the post. They reviewed it just in case. It ends up being off the post and out clean. At the end of the first period, the Preds do lead 3-1. to one. Columbus, though, out shooting Nashville 15-11. to 11. 14 seconds into the second period, it's Greaves coming up with a save on Michael McCarron's 258 mark of the second period. It's Greaves coming up with a save on Luke Evangelista, plus the follow-up by Shen at the 402 mark of the second period. The captain, Roman Yossi, fires one off of the crossbar, looking for his second goal of the game, ringing the iron. 427 in the second, and Saros coming up with a save on Sillinger. And at 452, it's Glass, his sixth goal of the season. It's a deflection off of Glass's jump screen. Now, this was confusing for a little while because it was switched to Carrier and then switched back to Glass later on proper. So Glass, with his sixth goal of the season, gives the Preds a 4-1 to lead. Jump screen, the puck barely scrapes off of him while he's in midair. Reminded me a lot of Victor Arvidsson when he was here for all those years. 4-1 to now in favor of the Preds. We go to the 602 mark of the second period. We find Greaves coming with a save on Beauvillier, 730 of the second. Greaves comes up with a save on Nyquist, 753. Saros, a save on Blankenberg, and then 1023. Just past the midway point of this game, it's Texier coming with his 12th goal of the season, cutting the Preds' lead in half. It was a breakaway with a five-hole finish. Didn't get all the shot that he intended on it, but it worked perfectly because it's in the back of the net, beating UC Saros for the Columbus Blue Jackets' second goal of the game. Now 4-2 to two in favor of Nashville with half a game to play. At 12-18 of the second period, it's Nylander off the box. Two minutes for high sticking. It's going to be Philip Forsberg getting his 47th goal of the season. That's right. It was a redirect with the skate. No distinct kicking motion was determined. No challenge was made. Philip Forsberg, good clean goal now for his 47th on the season. That's going to give the Nashville Predators a 5-2 to two lead here in the second period. At 15.09 of the second period, it's the captain, Roman Yossi, getting his 23rd goal of the season. This was simply magical. A strong drive to the net and just a tuck in at the end for good measure. The captain Roman Yossi with an otherworldly offense move his 23rd goal of the season now. So he's got two goals in this game and a crossbar. The Nashville Predators extending their lead now to 6-2 to two here at the 15.09 mark of the second period. We go to the 18.05 mark of the second period. We find UC Saros coming with save on Corrali and that's going to do it for the second period. The Nashville Predators extend their lead from 3-1 one to six to two over the Columbus Blue Jackets. We flip the sheet and we go to the third period and we find a clean sheet of ice and not a lot happening here at the very beginning of the period. That's where we go to 309 of the third. We find our first action is Lankinen coming with a save on Cylinder plus the follow up by Marchenko at 559 of the third period. We find Fix Molanski getting his first goal, and that is putting the Columbus Blue Jackets back on the scoreboard. Their third goal of the game makes this game now 6 to 3. The Nashville Prayers getting a little bit sloppy in their own zone and giving up a goal to Fix Molanski and the Columbus Blue Jackets right here. We move to 709 now into the third period. It's Greaves coming with a save on Ryan McDonough at the 838 mark of the 
third period. It is Greaves coming with a save on Bobillier at 9.43. Greaves another save on Luzon. So the Nashville Purs, after giving up that goal, able to generate a couple of consecutive shifts of pressure. More than the pressure, it's taking all of the offensive ability away from the Columbus Blue Jacks. But at 9.50, we find UC Soros coming with a save on Marchenko. We cross over the midway point of the period. Ten minutes to go in regulation at the 10.28 mark of the third period. We find Greaves coming up with a save on Nyquist. We move to 11.58 now of the third period. Wierenski hits the crossbar. Columbus still trying to get back into this game and fighting the hit iron again at the 12.19 mark of the third period. It's UC Soros coming up with a save on Severson at 13.12. We find Texier off the box. Two minutes for tripping. That's going to put the Nashville Predators back on the power play, but over the course of a about 60 seconds, the National Predators not able to get a lot done on this power play, and that's where we find Zucker picking up a penalty in the offensive zone, two minutes for tripping. That is going to bring us to a four-on-four -four scenario for a total of 57 seconds. After that would expire, that's going to bring the Columbus Blue Jackets power play out of the rink for potentially a minute and three seconds. We would find UC Soros dialing in and going to work, coming up with a big save on Voronkov right there, but that would be the only source of offense for the Columbus Blue Jackets over this short power play back to five on five hockey at even strength and we go to 1754 now of the third period and that's where we find UC Soros coming up with a save on Pythria at 1833 it is Greaves coming up with a save on Zucker and then at 1930 of the third period the Columbus Blue Jackets still fighting Fix Melansky comes up with his second goal of the period the second goal of the season in total and that brings the score to six to four and over the final 30 seconds of this game very little would happen the Nashville Purs would close things out end up holding on to the puck there at the buzzer for the six to four victory the captain Roman Yossi leads his team to center ice stick taps to the fans and then we hit the final six to four 37 shots on goal for each of these teams Nashville with 37 Columbus with 37 and then the captain Roman Yossi goes over and cuts a promo uh, for the fan base talking about how the team let them down a little bit at the home rink earlier in the season and they wanted to strive to get better all season long at home and they wanted to continue growing getting better and that's exactly what they did and they brought some exciting exciting games here in the second half of the season and down the stretch for this Nashville Predators team on home ice incredible home run this year the Nashville Predators pick up 23 victories on home ice that is highly impressive the shirts off the back ceremony would go on after that it would be a bit of a lengthy celebration downtown as the Nashville Predators close out the regular season portion of the home schedule one one game to go in the regular season, and then the next time that will be seen at Bridgestone Arena is games three and four of the first round against opponent yet to be determined, Vancouver or possibly Edmonton. Maybe even the Dallas Stars. Still a couple of games to go. Still some intrigue. But for the Nashville Predators, they close out the regular season home schedule with a record of 23-16-2. And, and that is highly impressive by any standard. And the Preds close out their final home game of the season with a 6-4 to four victory. Uh, the score is not as lopsided as the game actually was. The Preds got a little bit sloppy there in the third period and allowed Columbus to pick up a couple of goals. But Roman Yossi, a couple of more goals. Philip Forsberg gets another goal. And this Nashville Predators team, it sure has been fun. The magic sure feels like it's back. That's going to do it for the Reverse Sports full game recap, but we have so much more to talk about when it comes to this game. We've got analysis, we've got opinion, we've got box score, we've got stats and more, and that's all coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy, owner-operator of Strong Style Fitness, and that's me and my training assistant Rizzo, and we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar-inspired classes, Tabata workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been, what you were going through, and where you were going, and I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. 
Mwah. Welcome back in. That was the Rebirth Sports full game recap. Now it's time for some analysis, some opinion, and some stats. Then we'll get to the box score and we'll close this thing out. Busy weekend for the Nashville Predators. Able to take all four points this week and that puts them in so much of a better position here to take the first wild card spot and set the matchup coming up possibly with the Vancouver Canucks. So let's talk about UC Zaros. Got the start in this game. 31 out of 35. Gave up four goals in this game, but he was good enough. Sloppy late. That by the team in general that added two goals to it uh, that's a bit unfair for UC Soros in this one but it, the stat line doesn't look as pretty as the performance actually was and he got the victory and that's really all that matters in a game that uh, the Preds had just absolutely were, were blowing away uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets Lankinen did have to come in, in the game for a brief moment due to an equipment issue he did make two saves on two shots uh, against so let's make sure we make a note of that Lankinen always ready to go the captain Roman Yossi in this game was otherworldly as you know, he has been so many times before. Remember that a couple of games ago when he was responsible for the Preds losing a game? How many games since then has he been pretty much the catalyst or directly responsible for the Predators winning the game? This one, there's no question about it. Two goals for the captain in this one, plus two assists, four points. Now 85 points on the season, 23 goals, leads all NHL defensemen. And the power move and tuck in just shows you what level Roman Yossi is playing on right now. Cannot wait to see him perform in the playoffs on the big stage. He is going to have a lot, a lot of cameras on him. And he's ready for that spotlight. He's always been ready for that spotlight. And I hope this is the season that he can lead his Nashville Predators on a significant run. Because seeing Roman Yossi every game of his career, watching him, covering him each and every point that he's had in his career, uh, it's been incredible. And this game right here, just every one of those tools on display. And he is truly in the prime of his career in the top level right now. No, he's not going to have the career high in points, but sitting at 85 points, 11 points shy of his career high. That is a mighty, mighty impressive number for a National Predators defenseman. Philip Forsberg scores a goal in this game. is 47th of the season. He's got 93 points now. We talked about this briefly in the preview. Can he get three points against the Pittsburgh Penguins? I'm not sure, but nothing's impossible when it comes to Philip Forsberg. Somehow, if he managed to get three goals, he'd get to 50. He'd also get to the franchise record in points. That would be one spectacular way to break the record, become the first ever 50 goal scorer in franchise history, and then also to become the franchise points leader by getting to 96 and tying the captain, Roman Yossi. Can he get to 97? I don't know, but it's intriguing. It's one of the things we'll be watching for on Monday night, as well as Luzon looking to go for the record for hits. Tommy Novak also has two goals in this game, plus one assist for three points. All he does is make plays both of his goals. Nice. Getting into the good, hard, dirty scoring area and converting on the play. Won a redirect, won a good, clean wrist shot. Tommy Novak making plays out there for the Nashville Predators for three total points in this game. Gus Nyquist back in the lineup after being a healthy scratch, getting himself a rest and then getting back in the lineup for the home game on the second night of back-to-backs. Picks up two assists back with his line mates. Looked just fantastic out there as he has all season. That puts him up to 74 points. He's been beyond a career high in assists and total points for some time now. Won't reach his career high in goals, but the Nashville Predators are perfectly satisfied with the 74 points that Gus Nyquist has put up. And now we'll have a chance to see playoff Gus coming up here in just a couple of days. I'm intrigued to see what Nyquist can do with O'Reilly, who we know is a huge playoff performer and a great veteran and built for this time of year, built for the pressure, built for the big moments. And Philip Forsberg has been as good as anybody uh, offensively in the league the second half of the season. I'm very intrigued to see what that top line can do in a playoff series. And we're going to find out here in just a matter of a couple of days once we get the matchups and the schedule. That's going to do it for the analysis analysis portion of things let's hear from our good friends at stripe digital let's hit the box score let's get on out of the bunker the weather's too nice this weekend we need to get outside and enjoy it a little bit all right back after this right here on the ready gates of puck podcast the digital environment can be quite intimidating time consuming and cumbersome especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business and that's why stripe digital solutions is here to help i know because that's exactly what stripe digital solutions did for me and the renegades of puck From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that. It's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. 
In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. Welcome back in. Time for the good cold hard numbers known as the box score. Your goal scores for the Nashville Purs paced by Roman Yossi and Tommy Novak with two. Philip Forsberg and Glass also add a goal in this one. Glass's goal comes off of a deflected off of his body on the jump screen and finds its way in the back. And that little confusion on the scoring was changed a couple of times, finally settling on Glass knocking that puck in. When it comes to assist for the Nashville Purs, Roman Yossi had two. Gus Nyquist had two. Luke Evangelista also had two. So two games in a row for Luke with two assists, also adding assists. Beau Billier with one, Jankowski with one, Novak and O'Reilly with one, Carrier and McDonough also with one. When it comes to shots on goal, Philip Forsberg led the way with six, and then there was Michael McCarron with four. Beau Billier had four shots on goal. When it comes to the block shots category, four was the high for Alex Carrier, and then two for Yossi Luzon and Shen. That was the highs in block shots for the Purs. Now, Luzon tracking that hits record got to seven in this game. I believe he needs eight to tie nine to break in the final game it's a high number but going to an eastern conference building and a team that usually plays physical uh, it's not out of reach and with the nashville prayers playing for virtually nothing in this game uh, they can let luzon go out there and get some extra ice time and perhaps run around a little bit it's gonna be a shame if he misses the hits record by one or two when an injury held him out of the lineup for those three games so seven hits for luzon in this game game against Columbus Blue Jackets and then Anderson Dolan chipped in with three in his first ever game as a Nashville Predator. When it comes to time on ice leader second night of back-to-backs and it was a blowout for the majority of the game uh, the Predators did a good job managing the ice time all weekend long in both back-to-backs 1646 for Jankowski is the high for the forward 1626 for Zucker 1552 for Evangelista so you notice no Forsberg no Nyquist no O'Reilly in the top minutes for the forwards as is custom Mary. The same can be said on the defensive side of things as Luzon was out there 2305 tracking down that hits record. McDonough 2146 and for the second game in a row, second game of back-to-backs this weekend, the captain Romeo see under 20 minutes of time on ice and that is important to note because he's typically up around 24 25 minutes and sometimes well north of that. He always has the most minutes this weekend. Not so held below 20. That's a good job. He's also about to get some time off after Monday to rest, recuperate, recover from whatever he may be dealing with the end of an 82 game schedule but the captain Romeo only 1935 in total time on us and Stastny gets 1856 again in this game another impressive effort continue watching him and tracking him shift in shift out he is putting up an incredible incredible early resume in his career when it comes to the Nashville Predators power play they were two for three in this game the power play has been quite good as of late because they were converting so quickly on the power play the Preds do not have have very much in the way of time on ice leaders. Roman Yossi at 204 and then 103 for, and that would be Zucker for Novak and also for Glass. 101 for Evangelista, 101 for Forsberg. When it comes to the penalty kill, the Preds were one for one in this game. Penalty kill time on ice leaders. Shen at 59 seconds, Stastny at 59 seconds, and Sherwood at 56 seconds. What else falls out of the box? For the faceoff winning percentage, 48.6% for the Predators. In a bit of a blowout, they got sloppy in the third period, and they didn't necessarily take good care of the puck. 16 hits. I felt like that was a little bit of a low count for that game. 19 block shots, 16 takeaways, but... 21 giveaways that shows and indicates quite a bit of sloppiness on possession of the puck and also in the passing game predators have to clean that up for sure it was the matter of the score and being up six to two that i think led the predators to being quite so sloppy with it uh lankin in, in this game two for two that means his save percentage for this in game one thousand percent uc Saros gets the victory 31 out of 35 four goals against an in-game save percentage 886 again sloppy play in the third period allowed the goal count to get a little bit higher than it should have 29 even strike saves one power play save one shorthanded save in this game uh, and that's going to do it for the good cold hard numbers known as the box score the only thing left to do is close out this particular episode what are we on episode number 903 903 wow the number just keeps going up doesn't it? we're going to close this out by saying 23 16 and 2 23 16 and 2 let me repeat that again 23 victories on the home rank at bridgestone arena this season the feeling the feeling started to return it started to return last year uh, towards the end of the season when the predators made a mini run and almost qualified 
qualify for a playoff spot, people got very excited. The feeling started to come back in the building, but nothing, nothing like it has done this season. You heard the captain, Roman Yossi, after that game. He talked in rink on the mic to the fans directly, and that was a part of the broadcast as well, which is great for everybody to get to see. And he said that he felt like the squad, himself included, let the fans down in the early portion of the season when they were routinely blowing two goal leads and they got blown out a couple of times on home ice. But in the second half of the season, they definitely turned that around. The lengthy winning streak, uh, also a lot of that took place on home ice. And the Predators down the stretch here, the big comeback uh, against Vegas, big comebacks against some other teams in the third period. The standing ovations have been numerous, and that is incredible to see. That means the fans, and, and that is an all an organic thing inside the rink. There's uh, really nothing that encourages that. Uh, it is just something that uh, kind of happens. Uh, they don't play any music during that, and that's what makes it so special. It's a very organic thing. I was there the first night it happened. I was there for the first several hundred of those that occurred organically and spontaneously, and it continues to happen today, and the feeling is back at Bridgestone Arena. I mean, the Predators were not anticipated to really compete for a playoff spot this year. I mean, the most diehards were hopeful that maybe they could find a way to squeak into a wild card conversation if things broke right. Predators didn't need anything to break right. They went out there and went 23-16-2 at the home rink this year, and on the season, they're 47-29-5 with 99 points. Nobody predicted it. Nobody saw it coming. That's why it's been as fun as it has been. That's why the crowd is back the way that they are, and they are going to be absolutely jacked for a return to playoff hockey because post Peter Laviolette era, post John Hines era, the Andrew Burnett era has allowed Predators fans to believe that this team actually has a chance when they go out there to compete. 3.26 goals per game, 11th best scoring in the league for this Nashville Predators team. It is a sign of a change of philosophy and a sign of change of things. Players with 93 points, 85 points, 74, 68. You would never in the past see this type of point totals being accumulated by Nashville Predators. It is a much more offensively driven system with a defense that can handle itself, not the top tier defense in the league, but it can handle itself and goaltending that is capable of stealing an entire series, not just a game, but a series. You see Soros when he is dialed in, can absolutely shut a team down over the course of a seven-game series. So the feeling, it seems to be back. One game to go in the season. The Predators are in the playoffs. We'll find out the opponent. We'll find out the schedule. We're going to get ourselves all hyped and jacked here at the bunker and get to this playoff coverage. I personally cannot wait. I had a feeling that this team was going to be going in the right direction after all of the trades and all the moves that they made and the signings they made this summer, but you can't really prove it until you have that evidence in front of you. And a fourth place finish in the Central Division when people were talking about Arizona, Minnesota, St. Louis, how all of these teams were taking much better, bigger uh, progress than the Nashville Predators. Well, the Predators finished above all of them in the standings. Many people thought the Predators were going to be competing with the Blackhawks for eighth place in the central and the Predators finish in fourth place with 99 points and still two points out there to get I'd love to see the Preds find a way to get one more point to get that nice even 100 number getting a triple digits of points is an impressive accomplishment in any season especially when you're supposed to be in a rebuild all right it's gonna do for operation number 903 can't wait to get back in the bunker and talk to you guys more we'll start previewing the first round of the playoffs I'm your hosting captain crazy Charlie Sonny stick taps love and respect <laughs>